Hey everyone, um, it's been a long time since I've done an update on my planner system and what I'm using. Um, I think the last one that I did was more than a year ago, so I thought I'd give a quick update just in time for One Book July. Um, and if you're not familiar with One Book July, the idea behind that is um, a lot of people in the planner community use more than one planner um, every day, like as part of their everyday life. And the idea behind One Book July is to kind of um, go more minimal and just focus on using one planner um, for the month of July and kind of narrow down what works well for everyone and um, what you like and dislike about using one planner and kind of start scaling back and seeing um, what you really need and um, things like that. So my planner system uh, usually is only one book. So um, I only have one traveler's notebook that I've been using. Um, I obviously switch out the covers occasionally depending on the month, but usually my setup is one book. So for this month's One Book July, um, I decided in terms of um, trying to scale back, um, I decided to scale back in terms of the number of inserts that I'm using instead of scaling back the number of like, Traveler's Notebooks. Um, previously in my Traveler's Notebook, um, I had this insert here from the Traveler's Notebook company that has a couple of photos um, as well as some stickers that I occasionally put in the front. And then after that, I had a monthly insert, which is now moved into my current setup, followed by an insert from Coco Daisy, followed by um, like a brain dump bullet journal type thing. So um, I had been subscribed to Coco Daisy for um, about a year and my setup was pretty much the same throughout. So I would have um, kind of a list of things to do at the front, followed by um, some budgeting um, statistics, followed by my daily or weekly spreads. So I would have um, like every week going from Sunday through to Saturday, and then some things that I would do during the week, menu planning. As you can see, I kind of have stopped using the Coco Daisy booklets as much. Um, so I decided that this was probably one that I could get rid of, especially because a lot of the things that I'm doing in terms of crafting projects has been moved to um, Google Sheets now online. So I don't really need um, this insert. So uh, this is one of the things I'm getting rid of. And also in terms of this bullet journal, I'll put a link down in the description box below to um, the idea behind me setting this up. But as you can see, I've had this since August 2020 and I haven't even filled it up yet. It's um, <laughs> something that I have been working to fill up, but I just don't use it quite often enough to justify having that in there, um, which is why these two booklets are no longer being used in my current setup. Now, the thing that I did use consistently was um, this budget kind of expense tracker section that I set up. So each month I would have um, some categories. I think I have the categories listed here. So they're housing, utilities, transport, health, groceries, eating out, entertainment, crafting, presents and donations, uh, travel and other, as well as my income. And so I just have these pages divided into like this column, I would put the date, this column I would put a description and then this column here I would put like the amounts and then every month I would um, at the end of the month I would tally everything up and then write it down on this page and then transfer that information onto my uh, Google spreadsheet to keep track of every month and um, it was making me really sad that throughout the whole booklet I had kind of set up all of the weeks and then not really um, re use them a lot um, and then the rest of the booklet would go bl blank until you hit this expense section. And that, that was the section that I was using more often. So this is the new Traveler's Notebook that I have recently received from a company called Faz Josma. Um, they did send me this um, notebook to review. So I will review that um, after I go through my walkthrough of how I've set it up. But this is um, pretty much, so it's like a traveler's notebook 
in that it has it's like meant to be a cover for um like a notebook except for it doesn't have the elastics in the middle um nor does it have the closure elastic so you can see that this one here has the four elastics going through which enables you to hold multiple notebooks and then it, of course it has the closure elastic and the pen loop on the side. So this one has the pen loop in the center, which I'll talk about later on. Um, it doesn't have a closure elastic and it doesn't have um, elastics running down the middle. Obviously you can, of course, punch a hole um, in the center to put your elastic through if you really want, um, as well as some stringing elastics. All you need is like, let me just get that for you to show you. Um, all you need is like this awl tool and you can just punch a hole um, in your leather and create um, a closure system that way if you really like. But I just kept it as is for now. Um, and this is how I have my planner set up. So um, this card is, um, I've had this for a while. It's just a laminated card with my contact information as well as some emergency contacts. Um, I will probably put something decorative in behind this pocket. So this pocket um, does go all the way down here. So I can put something long in here. Maybe this bookmark that came in um, my Fezjosma package, just as a decorative element. Sure, I kind of like that. And then I have my monthly planner um, that I've had for a while um, that I've been using. Um, these are these printables are from Printable Pineapple, and they've recently changed their name to a different store name on Etsy, and I don't think they carry these um, pocket-sized uh, field notes-sized um, inserts anymore on their, um, on their Etsy page, which is very unfortunate because I've been using this monthly planner printable at least for quite a number of years. Um, since I've been using my own printable uh, Traveler's Notebook inserts. And the expense tracker is something new. Um, so just a quick look at what my month would look like. Um, I have um, the month here, of course. I do have a Sunday to Saturday um, is how I like to have my weeks. I have some birthdays here that I need to remember every month, some notes, and then I just have the days of the week that I fill in. Um, it is a blank printable, so you can um, fill in the dates here. And I'll leave a link in the description box below to Yellow Paper House. I believe they still make some physical inserts that you can buy um, if you're not able to find a printable version to use. And then the second book that I have in here is the expense tracker. So um, I have, instead of doing it by month, I figured out that if I just do it by um, like in terms of categories, then I can keep like a running list and I don't have to waste all the extra space that I don't use every month. So for example, health, I don't spend a whole lot on health um, every month. And so um, in my old planner system, I was having to use up like maybe three lines of that one section and then the rest of it would go blank. So here I have um, kind of like a running tally every month of um, my expenses and then I total it up at the end of the month. So that's the amount that I'll um, import into my spreadsheet. And then for the next month, I have my expenses, total it up, and then start a new month again. And so I have all of my categories here um, just written out. And then I do have some extra blank pages at the end um, so that I can fill in more as needed. So obviously the month here is not like the correct, <laughs> it's not the correct title because I'm putting my category he here. And then in terms of the category section, that's also incorrect because I have the month there. Um, but I feel like that's um, simple enough for me to remember and it doesn't bug me too much. And usually I will just ignore the total section as well. And then in terms of my um, daily or weekly pages, I found that I wasn't really including anything um, other than my work schedule in the weekly sheets on my um, Coco Daisy insert. So that's why I've gotten rid of that. And then I just have what shift that I'm working each day, um, as well as like some quick notes if I have appointments and things like that. And I feel like it's been going well so far. I've been in this setup for about two to three months. 
um, and I've been loving that. So in terms of how you fit the notebooks into this um, traveler's notebook sleeve, um, so they do have two areas here where you can put your notebooks. So you can slide one in here if you want, like the front cover of one in here, and then the back cover of one in here. Um, I did find that it does stain your notebook a bit. So you can see here that there's a bit of like a reddish tinge. And that's because I had originally tried putting this through to this side here. Um, I decided I didn't really like that because um, the pen loop kind of got in the way of, like it kind of looked a bit um, weird <laughs> just having this front cover in inside this um, front um, pocket in here. So I decided what I would do instead is to just put the back cover of the back notebook um, in this back section here in the pocket. And then I do have an elastic going through around. So you can see that what I did was I opened this to the center and then I opened this one to the center and then I have slipped this elastic over to hold them together and I'll straighten out the elastic later on. Um, but that's pretty much how you get the two notebooks um, in this one notebook system. Overall, I'm really liking this. Um, it's a bit lighter than having the four inserts, of course, um, and I think this has really streamlined my process um, in setting up my planners every month um, because there's very little setup that's involved um, going forward. I pretty much just have to print out another yearly one every year and then fill in the, the dates and the months. Um, as well as obviously continuing to um, fill out like the categories um, on the tops of each of these pages when I next need them. And then I'll eventually have to print out another um, booklet for this as well. Um, I did manage to fit 10 pages um, double sided in here. And for the months, I usually do 13 months. So I'll have like January through to January. And then next January, I'll print out another one that starts January 2023 through to January 2024. So let's pull out these inserts because I do want to um, review this notebook for you. So it came in this box, um, which I thought was pretty good presentation. And then it had this dust cover sleeve, which I will for sure keep um, for storage if I'm not using this notebook. And then there was... Um, this postcard in with the with the box as well as this bookmark that I'm going to be keeping and then I'll just pull out some of my other travelers notebooks so that we can compare like the texture and the um, thickness and things like that so I've brought out an assortment of my travelers notebooks as well as notebook covers um, just for some comparisons um, this one here is the closest because um, it is another notebook cover as opposed to a traveler's notebook, meaning this one doesn't have the elastics. And this one is from Pop of Leather. These two are from Foxy Fix, which I believe is out of business at this point. These three are from Chic Sparrow, and this one is from Falcon Travelers. And um, for reference, all of these are designed to hold field notes sized notebooks or um, they also call them pocket sized notebooks. So these notebooks are about, oops, let's go to the inches side, three and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And this is the size of notebook that I use um, to print out my inserts um, that go into my traveler's notebooks as well. So um, this one here from Pop Off Leather, Leather, we'll just move all of these ones to the side. Um, I like the fact that this has the vertical pockets instead of the horizontal pockets here. Um, it just makes, it just enables you to put something um, longer in this back pocket as well as a card here. Um, and I don't actually use this for, like I have a separate wallet um, and I don't use this as a wallet. So um, I don't mind the fact that this is the full length rather than like um, a card sized insert. And the only thing that I don't like about this one in compared to this one um, is the um, 
pen pocket here. So the pen pocket can hold a field notes pen. This would slide right in just fine. Um, it is a bit long though, so you have to really tug to get the pen out. Um, and I have seen some people lose um, the shorter pens in this pen pocket before. Um, so that's, to me, a disadvantage to using um, this notebook. And I've also found that I can't really fit my Coletto pens um, as easily. So the Coletto pen, you can see that it's kind of stretching the leather as you're pushing it in. And obviously it takes quite a bit of force to pull that out as well. Um, I imagine this might loosen up as you use it, but for me it's just not really functional and I would rather um, that they had it on the side or not had the pen loop at all. Um, the good thing though is um, even if I have notebooks in here and I'm writing on this side of the page, I haven't really found that this has been bulky enough um, to make a difference in terms of my writing experience. However, if you do have a pen in there and you're trying to write on top of that with a separate pen, I would imagine that that would be um, a bit challenging though. In terms of the different leathers that um, this one has uh, compared to this one, so um, just as a price reference, this one is about $25 US, $20 to $25 US on the Amazon website. And this is about $99. And you can really tell in terms of this one is very smooth and very soft. And this one kind of has like a bit more grab to it. Um, I do like the feeling of this as well. It's just kind of a different experience when I'm feeling them. Um, and then as well, the texture inside is different. So this texture is a bit, I would say a bit rougher. And then this one is a bit more fuzzy and you can see the little fuzzy bits kind of come, come up when you brush your finger across it. And then this one kind of has a more smoother finish and this one is a bit more grabby. I do like the stitching detail on this one a bit more. It just stands out a bit more than the stitching detail here. Um, but either way, I think it looks great. This one in particular is the wine color that I picked from their store. I think there were three different options. There was a brown, a coffee, and the wine, and I picked the wine one for myself. In terms of the thickness, I do think that the pop-off leather one is a bit thinner, um, if you can see that. But in terms of size, they are quite comparable. Um, so this one here, we'll just lie this one on top. This one here is a bit um, wider, um, but the Popov is a bit taller. Um, that being said, I do find that this, um, this notebook fit the field note sized inserts just fine. And I think having the wider spine um, enables you to use more inserts. Like if you wanted, you could probably fit in three. Um, whereas this one is really designed for more like one notebook or two notebooks. In terms of the Foxy Fix ones, um, this one is definitely a thicker leather than this one. So I wouldn't say that's comparable. Um, and then this leather that they used for their, um, this was like a limited edition printed one. Um, you can see that the leather here is um, thicker than the Faz Joe's Mo one as well. And then in terms of size, um, this Foxy Fix one is also um, a bit narrower than the Faz Josma one, but they're about the same height which is um, typically the field notes um, size traveler's notebook, notebooks will be about this height as well. This one does have like a little um, adjustable pen loop that you can put it either in the front and then you can put your pen in here or on the side. Um, I don't really use that as much though. In terms of my Chic Sparrow notebooks, so I would say that the leather is the closest in terms of thickness to the Mockingbird leather. So um, this one is retired and it is softer than um, the, the leather in this Faz Josma notebook. So you can kind of tell that this is kind of soft. 
but this is definitely much more pliable and softer to the point where um, this one kind of bothered me because if you stretch the elastics too much, they kind of tug on the spine. Whereas I think even if you had elastics in here, they wouldn't do that because the leather is, um, I think, stiff enough that it could hold the weight of the elastics. And in terms of the other two thicknesses of notebooks, this one is the creme brulee and this one is, um, I think, like the Hemingway or something like that. Um, these ones are definitely much thicker than the Faz Josba one. And then just doing a quick comparison with the um, Falcon Traveler's Notebook. Um, this one is specifically in the color um, red 29. And you can see that this leather is, again, much thicker than the Faz Josma one. You can see right there. Um, and then as well, I, I don't have any other notebooks that have this kind of um, like a more um, of a grabby textured cover. Most of the ones that I have are a bit smoother. Um, obviously, a lot of my notebooks have engraved my name on it and Faz Josma doesn't have that option, but I do still like this notebook. Um, it's decently priced, I feel, and I've really enjoyed using it so far. This notebook cover is currently listed as unavailable on the Faz Josma Amazon storefront, but I will leave a link in the description box below anyways, just in case they do restock that in the near future. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching.